you're live and you can go wild. All right, wonderful folks. Welcome to the Wednesday, August 12th, 2020 uh, edition of the Historic Resources Preservation Board meeting. And uh, we can begin by having roll call, if we could. Certainly. Um, Bernard Guthrie. Chip. I'm here. <laughs> I know I know everyone's there, but just just for the um, Bill Feldkamp. Here. Judith Just. Here. Ozzy Ona. Here. Bob Dorenzo. I'm here. And we know we're working on Judy Fox right now, so you have a quorum. We have a quorum. Wonderful. Are there any additions, deletions, or uh, reorderings? No, Mr. Chairman. In that case, can I hear a, uh, a motion to approve the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Moved, Sec seconded. I second. Moved and seconded. Uh, all in favor, aye. 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 Okay, next we move to approval of the minutes of the July 8th meeting. Can I hear a motion to approve the July 8th meeting notes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the July 8th meeting. Do I hear a second? Hey, I second, yeah. Second by Mr. Ona. All in favor, aye. 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 All righty. Now we're getting into cases and swearing in of staff and applicants. Ms. Cole. Okay, so let's give a minute to, and there they go. And everybody's. Everybody's over. Yeah, everyone can enable their camera and unmute. Just uh, missing Edwin. Can you see me now? Sir? Yes. Okay, so we have him in audio. Looks like he unmuted again. Okay, so I have two. Okay. Okay, good. there we go. And here's Robert. Davo, you're on twice? Okay. It's okay. Yeah, I just have a, a difficulties in my audio. Okay. All right, we're good. Everybody who plans on giving testimony this evening, please raise your right hand. Do you swear and affirm the testimony you will give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? If so, say yes. 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 Okay. So, um, applicants, I will move you back to the attendees for now. All right, I think, are we on to the next uh, proof of publication? I think we have that in our packets, Ms. Cole. Um, actually, there were no proofs for this meeting, if I'm correct. Is that correct, Jordan? Yeah, none of the, uh, none of the items required publication. Publication, yeah. Oh, interesting, all right. <laughs> uh, then we'll move on to uh, withdrawals. There are no withdrawals or postponements tonight. And uh, board disclosures. Can we start with uh, Ms. Just disclosures? Um, muted. You're muted. We cannot hear you. Sorry. <laughs> about uh, the project on South Palm Lane. Thank you, Mr. Dorenzo. I also spoke with Mr. Zerdi regarding the uh, project on Fifth and South Palmway. And Mr. Guthrie. I also spoke with Mr. Zerdi about the project on South Palmway. All right, Ms. Fox is uh, not quite with too. us yet. And Mr. Ona. I guess uh, Joe was very busy calling everybody. I talked to him also about the project. General statement where the location is but nothing is specific. All right, and so did I. Spoke with Mr. Sherdy, Mr. Sherdy. Uh, 
I think we're on to new business if we can. Item A is consideration of a request for mural installation. Uh, Mr. Hodges, or is that yours? Or uh, Mr. Mr. Fogel will be presenting this item tonight. Thank you, Mr. Fogel, take it away. Can't hear you. Presentation. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, good evening. I'm Abraham Fogel, preservation planner for the city of Lake Worth Beach. Item A is consideration of a request for a mu mural installation for the contributing structure located at 717 Lake Avenue. The subject property is located in the downtown zoning district and the Old Town Local Historic District. The structure is located on the southeast corner of Lake Avenue and South J Street. And as I mentioned, it's located in the downtown zoning district and it's a contributing structure to the Old Town Local Historic Subject property was constructed circa 1930 in a commercial masonry vernacular architectural style. Although the original architectural drawings are not available, a property card from the 1940s provides important information about the structure. The structure was constructed with tile exterior walls, likely clay hollow tile and a flat roof design. I was able to locate this historic photograph, although we are not able to see the building directly. Um, it is in the background and we can see um, some of the engaged columns and stucco uh, reliefs that are still present in the building today. In addition, uh, I was also able to locate the building in this historic postcard, uh, which again shows the engaged columns stucco relief panels, and it looks like at some point the structure also had an exterior canopy system. On the left is a photo of the front facade uh, fronting Lake Avenue, um, and on the right is a photo uh, on the corner where you mostly see the west facade fronting South J Street. Photo to the left shows the west facade where the majority of the mural will be installed. As you will see in the next slide, a portion of the mural does wrap around the building and fronts Lake. Here is a rendering of the proposed mural. Ruben Ubiera, a Miami-based artist, will complete the mural installation. The title of the mural is Mancho Villa and the Day of the Dead. It, sees, it seeks to highlight um, Pancho Villa, who was a general that played a crucial role during the Mexican Revolution from 1910 to 1920. According to the artist, the mural will depict Pancho Villa enjoying his afterlife. In addition, the mural also utilizes flowers and vivid colors to convey a friendly atmosphere. Here is another view of the mural. And if we go back to the other photo, you can see um, at the top left that half of that face would be on the front facade uh, facing Lake. Staff has reviewed the documentation and materials provided and has outlined the applicable guidelines and standards found in the City of Lake Worth Beach land development regulations concerning mural installation. So there's um, LDR section 23.1-12, which defines a mural, and LDR section 23.5-1E13 provides standards and requirements for mural installation. Um, I would like to highlight that um, this section indicates that murals shall not be permitted on the fronts of buildings or structures facing Lake Worth Road, Lake Avenue, Lucerne Avenue, Dixie Highway, Federal Highway, except as may be approved by the appropriate board. Um, so this subject mural application does have a, a portion fronting lake. So that will be um, at your discretion to review and approve. Um, and the last uh, item here is that murals may coexist with all types of on-premises signs. If printed commercial messages are included in a mural, the entire mural shall be considered part of the allowable signage permitted by code. 
Um, this was communicated uh, to the applicant originally. Um, there was going to be commercial message for the new restaurant uh, on the mural. That has since been removed. Um, and if the board uh, finds it appropriate, you can also um, add a condition of approval to reinforce that requirement. Code regulations also require that the design of the mural must meet the requirements of section 23.2-31L, which defines community um, appearance criteria. Um, here's the criteria shown uh, in the slide. Number one relates to conformity with good taste, design, and the aesthetic quality uh, of the proposal. Number two uh, relates to it not being of inferior um, quality where it would have a negative effect on surrounding properties. Number three uh, relates to harmony with the surrounding area. And number four is related to conditional uses, which is not applicable in this situation. Based on staff's analysis, the proposed mural is in harmony with the city's downtown, portrays good taste and design, and is not of inferior quality. Also the analysis of staff that the project as proposed is generally compatible with the review criteria set forth in the city's land development regulations and historic preservation ordinance. Historic commercial structures often utilize murals on the side and rear elevations in downtown commercial areas in order to advertise um, products or to add art artistic beauty and interest within the downtown. Murals on the front of structures in historic commercial downtowns are atypical. The primary facades of these structures were typically reserved for standalone signage and large, I'm sorry, and large storefront windows. So as I mentioned, uh, the majority of the mural is proposed on the west elevation. Um, a small portion would be visible from um, the front facade. Back to that. Um, also, um, some of the remaining features um, on this structure are those engaged columns. Um, they are not fully obscured. You can see those elements. Um, so staff did um, add the condition that the mural would be installed as proposed and, not, and would not extend further into the columns. So um, that architectural element would not be lost. That concludes staff presentation. In this slide, I have the conditions of approval. Most of these uh, conditions of approval are typical. Number three has been um, added to address concerns. A lot of times we, we get murals and once they're installed, there are large um, artist signatures. It might have some advertising for that artist. So condition number three was uh, added to limit the size and location of an artist signature. And also based on the previous mural case, we added condition number six, that the sidewalk shall be protected from painting during the installation process. That concludes staff presentation. Um, the, I believe the property owner is here with us and he can answer any additional questions. Thank you, Mr. Fogel. Uh, does the applicant wish to add to, to the city's presentation? List. Yeah, um, I believe you're muted. Mr. Gabriel, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you now. Better. Wonderful. How's everyone doing? Thank you for taking your time. Thank you. Okay. Is there anything uh, yeah. you would like to uh, further explain? Uh, Otherwise, uh, the members of the board will be asking you uh, questions. Yeah, I would just uh, like uh, to, uh, to first thank you guys for taking your time and uh, hear me. Um, as you can see, the paintings uh, uh, is an art. Uh, we hired this, uh, it's a very famous artist. He's, uh, he has uh, paintings all over the town. Uh, he's doing a great uh, job as an artist and I think it'd be a, a very good day. Uh, um, art to put it uh, lake um downtown lake court and definitely you call a lot of people in to uh, you know take pictures and uh, enjoy the um the art all right are there questions from 
board members. Uh, uh, Mr. Ona. Hey, hello, Gustavo. Hi, how are you? Uh, first, I want to tell you uh, thank you to Captain Laywar. We, we offered our arts to receive it. And I think it's a nice project. But you, can you tell us about your plans? How it's going to be restaurants and how will we improve the, the life of the avenue? Uh, we are bringing a, 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 a venue that is not in um, downtown Lakeport, Lakeport yet. Yeah, that's a, a Mexican restaurant. Uh, we're looking to not do a uh, to do a, a nice uh, restaurant over there, uh, focusing medium class to high class. Um, I think it's going to be an amazing addition for Lake Worth to bring in more people to come down to downtown. All right, Ms. Fox, do you have any comments? I think Ms. Fox is on now. We'll get back to her. Mr. Guthrie, thoughts, questions? The, um, the only comment I had um, looking at this, it's a depiction, excuse, excuse me for a second. <laughs> Bill, I'd just like to say I came in late, so I'm just gonna hold off on this one. All right. Um, it, appears, it appears that the depiction on the on the mural is a um, as of a uh, is of a Day of the Dead celebration. That's correct. And um, the the only reservation I have, I think it's a beautiful mural, but um, the the Day of the Dead is a one day celebration, is it not? That's correct. Um, but this mural will be on there, um, you know, three hundred sixty five days of the year. The, um, the, the question I had and, and, and sort of the comment I had was it'd be like if somebody had a, a, put an ice cream shop down the road and they decided to, to put a big mural of Santa Claus on the, uh, on the side because it you know, depicts winter or cold or ice or whatever. Um, it, it would be, um, that was my only thought is that this is not a year round type of, um, of a depiction um, it is of, of Pancho Villa. I mean, I, I understand. Uh, I was reading the uh, the backup story behind it. Is there any significance also to the uh, to the young lady in the in the uh, in the? Yes, yes. Uh, so um, Dia uh, Dia dos Mortos, as uh, we all know, the Day of the Dead. It's uh, expressly one of the uh, biggest thing on the Mexican culture. You know, and if you go to any Mexican restaurant or to go to any Mexican museum. For example, you will see the Day of the Dead expressively everywhere. And the lady, uh, her name is Katrina. She's uh, she was one of the first uh, ladies to be joined uh, as an uh, expression of the Day of the Dead. Uh, she's a, a big name on also uh, 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 on the Mexican culture. And the reason why we're putting her over there is also to uh, bring the women. Uh, image to the board to the uh, uh, art and to give a little bit more softness and bring more art to also to the panel but uh, the day of the death is something that uh, mexicans they really do 365 a year everywhere you go you see it's uh it's pure expression of their culture thank okay. you and we do have a we do have a very robust day of the dead celebration um at the hatch every well starting to be every year uh, it's been a very exciting thing for the town, and the uh, the costumes and the vibrant colors are very welcome. Uh, it's just, I just Beautiful. thought it was one day. I just thought it was one day of the year. That, that's that's uh, all my comments. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dorenzo. Comments? I'm good. Uh, my questions were answered. All right, and Ms. Just. Ms. Just. Yes, I'm here. I think it looks very nice. I don't have a problem with it. Okay, thank you. I'll, I'll make my comments. Um, on the one hand, I'm very happy to see the pilasters retained. Uh, we had a bad experience with another project up the street a few months ago, uh, which exploded to be much larger than we had been led to believe. So. I do hope that Mr. Gabriel understands that what we're approving is the maximum 
and that it should not go over this dimension. Yes, um, there we understand. And I'm also a little concerned that we're turning the corner and actually getting onto one of those streets. Uh, as staff has noted, we have the discretion to permit it. Uh, we had an issue with that on Lucerne about a year ago, if you folks remember it. And yes. A little bit of a, of a concern at the City Hall Annex where it turned the corner. Um, so this is not the first time uh, I'm okay to let it go. I do have a wonder of where your real signage will be. Uh, and I would sort of like to hold off in uh, giving the permit until we see the signage for the rest of the building. Is there going to be any signage on the J Street wall or will it all be uh, on the awnings that are on Lake Avenue or where do you expect your uh, signage to be? We are uh, studying the options. Uh, we have a few options that I would like to discuss with you. One is uh, adding the uh, signage at the panel as a first, I think you submitted to the city. I don't know if that is uh, still on the table uh, at, at the top of the painting on the over uh, both of the ponchos, we would like to ride over there, Los Ponchos, uh, Tacos and Tequila Bar. If there, um, they'll be right on top of both of the guys. Um, if they'll be okay, obviously, if not, we are looking to a very small sign. Uh, they'll be on top of the door. Uh, if you can go back on the picture, it would be great so they can have an idea. Obviously, we're doing everything to preserve, um, uh, you know, the structure. We're not, we're not, we're trying to maintain everything the way it is, our colors, and uh, the third option will definitely be the owning. Uh, so you see where the canopy is, the white and, uh, and the black canopy, they'll be removed and we, you, you ride those punches right there. Obviously, it's gonna be a very small sign not uh, really ideal for the business, but I mean, we are, we are being flexible and you um, letting you guys decide which, which is the best for, for um, you know, downtown Lake Court and, and, you know, the historical society and all that. So right. it's- um, Well, my, my opinion, uh, sir, is that to put poncho, the word ponchos right above the image of Poncho really makes that entire wall into signage. Correct. So I would be opposed to that. I would be fine with having signage on the awnings on Lake Avenue, if that's what you want to do, or having it just above the door where the uh, uh, black and white awning is. But I would be opposed to putting it anywhere on the mural. Okay, Mr. Uh, Chairman, if I may, um, just to go over what Abe had mentioned in his report, it is actually prohibited in the code to correct. place signage within a mural. So okay, um, I okay. think your instincts are correct. Um, that's not where what our murals look like, and it's actually expressly prohibited. All right, beautiful for me. I mean, this, so those are we are here to working with you. I know everybody call me crazy to try to open a restaurant in these times, but I'm going for it. <laughs> well, we, I think we are all very happy to have you here. We're, we're excited to have a, another restaurant in town and something that uh, keeps the Lake Avenue moving. Uh, so to, what is the, uh, the tenor of the board? Should we add something? Uh, I have a question. Yes. All right. Um, do we approve the signage or is that something that's done by the city at the uh, staff level? That's typically uh, done at uh, staff level. We would get a sign permit. Uh, with, with this um, project, they were looking at different signage options. Um, so, so I did tell them, you know, it could not be contained within the mural because then it would have a commercial message and we would have to uh, view the entire mural as a sign. And there's limits on how much square footage sign can have and it would likely exceed it but typically it's just a permit that comes in that's that's reviewed by staff. Because I think we're kind of getting ahead of the thing, the, 
the proposition here by putting restrictions on him. Obviously, he can't put the signage in the mural. So that's Correct. kind of a, a point not worth really discussing because it can't happen. But I think to get into the details of what kind of sign he's going to put up is um, a little bit overbearing at this point. We don't even know what he wants to do. OK. So you think that we can leave it to staff to uh, to approve the proper sign that- Yeah, I guess, I mean, I agree. generally yeah. what's done. So why not leave it at that? And if he has a problem with it, then I guess he can come before us if he, he wants to override. Correct? All right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I can agree that. And we, Abraham, think him in charge of uh, approve the new sign and we can submit to us the new information. But right now we can just approve the mural as is, as presented. Is there more discussion? Can I hear a motion? I, well, I, I can make up. I move to approve the HRPV project number 20-0000014 with the staff recommended condition of the request of mural installation on the contributor structure located in 717 Lake Avenue, based upon and the competent substantial evidence provided for the staff report and pursuit to the city of Lake World Beach land development regulations. Can I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Dorinzo, all in favor, aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. I thank you very much. Mr. Chair, if I can just add on behalf of staff, we're all very excited about Mr. Gabrielle opening and going and getting some lunch there. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Take yeah, out a All the best. All thank the you best. very much, uh, Mr. Gabrielle. Are you, we're looking are forward you, I have everyone in uh, in uh, in on the loop, if Abraham can send everybody's email to my email so I can uh, formally invite you over for a grand opening. That would okay. be fantastic. Great. All right. I think, thank you very much. Thank I really appreciate. Thank you, sir. We look forward to supporting your local business. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Shall we move on to item B, consideration of a certificate of appropriateness for 221 Princeton Avenue or Princeton Drive, I apologize. All right, so just adjust things over here. Okay, so item B is consideration of a certificate of appropriateness for partial window replacement for the property located at 221 Princeton Drive the subject property is a non-contributing resource to the College Park Local Historic District and is located in the single family zoning district. Property owners are requesting a COA for exterior alterations to replace three windows on the structure's front facade. The subject property is located on the south side of Princeton Drive between Pennsylvania Drive and North Federal Highway. As I mentioned, the property is located in the single family zoning district and it is a non-contributing resource to the College Park Local Historic District. A little bit about the project history. On June 15, 2020, the property owner submitted a building permit for a partial window replacement for the subject property. On June 23rd, historic preservation staff failed the permit because it did not contain a certificate of appropriateness or photos of the existing windows. Photos of the existing windows are always required with window replacements so that staff can assess the compatibility of the replacement products. Um, after staff received the COA application and the photos, we advise the property owner that as proposed, uh, staff could not approve the request since it was not consistent with our historic preservation design guidelines that point, the property owner indicated the windows were already purchased and requested a board hearing to review the window replacement. Um, in a few slides, I will provide further details on the proposal, but essentially the three windows would have a 
vinyl impact single home window, and this image is from the manufacturer's website. The structure was constructed circa 1950 in a masonry vernacular architectural style. City building records indicate the structure utilizes masonry construction with a smooth stucco exterior finish and an asphalt shingle hip roof. Here we have the original architectural drawings for the structure. The character defining features include two and three light awning windows, decorative stucco detailing, and a front door stoop with a wrought iron support. In 1955, a carport addition was constructed on the west side of the property with a flat roof and brick piers fronting Princeton Drive. And in 1988, a rear addition was constructed behind the carport to accommodate additional living area. Building records indicate the structure has had minor alterations over time, including permits for plumbing, air conditioning, roof replacement, and fencing. The 1998 designation report for the College Park Local Historic District classified the property as non-contributing. In 2019, College Park was resurveyed um, using grant funds during phase three of our surveying effort, three of four. At the completion of the survey, the property at 221 Princeton Drive was deemed eligible for reclassification as a contributing resource. This is the property as it sits today, visible from Princeton Drive. The front facade includes two light and three light steel awning windows. The city's historic preservation design guidelines provide a guide for compatible window replacement. Windows are among the most important character defining features uh, in a structure, but are one of the most commonly replaced features of a building. You can see in this slide, we have page 199 of our design guidelines, which provide uh, examples of the original and what the most successful, successful, and unsuccessful replacement would be of that original window. For the Certificate of Appropriateness Approval Matrix for contributing resources, only exterior alterations visible from the street require a COA. Therefore, with this application, we're only reviewing the three windows uh, on the front facade. This varies a lot from property to property, but this property is cited 30 feet from Princeton Drive. Slide. The building was originally designed with two light and three light on windows, and those original windows remain on the structure. On this slide, um, at the top, uh, you will see what the applicant has proposed as a window replacement for the front facade. Um, it would utilize three single home vinyl windows um, to replace the two light and three light uh, awning windows with white frames. Um, staff's recommendation for the most successful uh, replacement would utilize aluminum frame windows with a clear anodized finish to replicate the existing finish of the windows and the actual window type uh, could be all casements uh, or it could also utilize a mixture of casements, single hung windows, or fixed windows. In this instance, it would really be the exterior applied muttons that would help to replicate and distinguish three light and two light uh, windows. The main issue with the single hung windows is that um, that differentiation is lost, um, the frame color as well, and it's a different material. All exterior alterations to structures within a designated historic district are subject to visual compatibility criteria. Staff has reviewed the documentation and materials provided in this application and outlined the ap applicable guidelines and standards. The proposed partial window replacement with gelled wind vinyl impact single home windows will result in a substantial change to the structure's appearance. The proposal is unsuccessful in replicating the original windows and does not complement the architectural significance of the structure. The structure's original and existing steel awning windows will be removed to allow the installation of the replacement windows. 
the least possible adverse effect would be to either maintain the windows or successfully replicate their appearance. Inclusion, as I mentioned, the proposed partial window replacement will result in a change in the window design, unsuccessful in replicating the original windows based on the guidelines uh, set forth in our design guidelines. Um, but staff has added conditions of approval that would change the window type, material, and configuration to reach compliance with our historic preservation ordinance, our design guidelines, and the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. The conditions are here. Um, if you like, it can walk through the conditions or we can um, allow the applicant to can we walk through them, please? I'm sorry? Can we walk through the conditions? Yes. Thank you. So condition number one is to utilize aluminum frames, which would uh, most accurately replicate the proportions of the existing steel awning windows. And that's really tied in to also number eight, to using a clear anodized silver finish. That option is not available with a vinyl product. Uh, number two and number three, uh, if I can go back, they just really describe the mutton type and the window type that would be um, needed to replicate that appearance. So for example, uh, a three light window, you're able to use um, a fixed window, an awning window, for example, and apply two horizontal muttons and create that appearance. A two light window offers more options. A single hung window can actually replicate two lights or you can also use a fixed or um, awning window in that location as well. Four is our standard condition to uh, use exterior applied muttons. Uh, five is also a standard condition to replace within the window opening. Six that it be recessed the same way the existing windows are and not installed flush with the exterior wall. That's another standard condition. And finally seven, which is another standard condition that clear or glass with a clear low V coating be utilized. And Mr. Chair, if I may, this what we had discussed is if you're comfortable with the white versus the anodized aluminum uh, for this particular property, it really comes down to the two larger windows. All right, is the applicant uh, online? Yes. Um, Would the applicant like to uh, describe uh, anything more? It would be one moment, um, Mr. Chairman, I just have to transfer him as a panelist. Okay. Abe, once you transfer the applicant, could you please pull up on the slide the front facade replacement, what the proposed, um, what the applicant's proposing and what staff's proposing? You're... <clears throat> One, let me make sure he can get off. Okay, can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Um, we chose the single hung windows. Uh, we're neighbors, uh, our neighbors to the west, two houses are the exact footprint of our house. And um, my neighbor immediately next to me has the single hung plain plate glass window. And my other neighbor uses the more colonial style. And those were, uh, other than the additions that have been put on the house, they were built by the same builder. Uh, you can see our cathedral ceiling in the living room. We all have the same features in the house. It looks very attractive um, on the house and, um, I, I thought they would be the right thing to use. Um, the neighborhood uh, only has a few of these uh, windows in use uh, around here. Uh, my neighbor to the uh, east, right next door, has the awning windows like we have. And, um, but they left one in, they didn't change them all. 
and he has a single hung plate glass window with a wood frame. Uh, and that's a 1950s house. So I really felt that this was really, um, you know, conforming to everybody else in the neighborhood. All right, thank you. Uh, can we get questions from the board members? Let's start with uh, Ms. Just. Um, a question I have is, all, are all the other windows in the house gonna be the vinyl windows? Yes, that's what we're planning. We have uh, two egress windows on the east that we have, uh, and those are vinyl, Genwell, the same brand, impact, uh, double pane uh, windows okay. with low E. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Mr. Dorinzo, questions? Um, <sighs> You know, I really don't know how to say this. We do get windows constantly, and you'd think these window companies um, would catch on. And the residents, being that the majority of our city east of Dixie, you know, downtown area, College Park, and all that, are historic districts. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm okay right now. Let me carry on. Mr. Guthrie. Yes, I'd like to ask the applicant um, when they, how did this go down where they purchased the window? Did, did they go out and seek this and they didn't know anything about uh, historic guidelines or types of windows that, um, that they needed to look into before actually making a purchase? Uh, I was just trying to duplicate what my neighbors had. I was unaware until in fact, I didn't have the COA the first time I submitted the application because I didn't know anything about about it. You know, I'm just trying to you know do this myself, and and so uh, Abraham's been very helpful and uh, got me to the point where I could get a COA in there with the plans and uh, explain the situation. Uh, I I would like to do the other windows, and I'm I I as far as um, getting the approval, it would just save a lot of money too. I mean, there is a, uh, there's a, it's a good quality window and um, it will look very attractive on this house. I did give uh, Abraham some pictures of my neighbor's houses that use the same type of window. Um, and, and, um, I, I just, um, I didn't think there'd be a problem with it, but I'm here today. And I have a question for Abraham. Um, in, the in the beginning of your presentation, uh, you stated that with the phase three um, uh, survey of the area, uh, this property became eligible. What's the difference between eligible and designated? That's a great question. So um, as you know, we're in the process of surveying our historic districts, we're actually almost done. That will be complete next month. So after that is complete, we would go through the adoption process um, for those new surveys. And that's when we would um, have the change of some of the structures from non-contributing to contributing. That of course has public participation, public noticing, um, and there's a formal uh, adoption process. In parallel to that, um, our code does allow that administratively a homeowner can request that reclassification. So let's say this property, for example, the surveyor has already done the documentation to establish its eligibility, which is usually the hard part. So um, if, for example, this homeowner was interested, he could apply and we would just pull that documentation we already have. So um, with our survey being complete, uh, some home homeowners can come forward. We already have the documentation and we, and we can uh, change their status administratively or they can wait uh, during the adoption process to provide their input when we'll be considering the districts as a whole. Okay, so therefore it is still not considered yes. designated. Correct. Or at uh, this 
So as a non-contributing structure, um, we're only looking at these three windows. So, you know, if, let's just say he bought three windows, he bought four windows, he can use those windows somewhere else on his house because we're, he will need a building permit, but we're not reviewing it for, you know, visual compatibility. It might be even a new window opening he's creating. We're not going to review it for historic preservation. The, um, the north elevation on page four of my packet shows the um, the proposed with the uh, all three windows would be single hung. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Is the slide up? And these are yes. already okay. And these are already purchased. Yes. The um, the depiction of the staff recommendation. Um, down below, if it were to take the two left hand larger windows that you were talking about and make them four light instead of three light, would he be able to just apply the Muntins to the? Yes. So that's a great point, Chip. The only thing with that is then proportionally the two light becomes a three light. So you're not able to use a single hung window. So there's different ways you, you can play with this. So um, on one hand, <clears throat> The applicant did indicate he was going to use a casement window on the side that's the same size so he could use that casement window for the three light he already has a single hung window that can replicate the two light so then the issue is reduced to only one new opening needed and that single hung window can be used elsewhere in the property so there's there's a lot of alternatives and when we boil it down it's a matter of only one or two windows needing to be adjusted are all these windows different? How many other windows aside from the three that we're looking at now are there and shouldn't there be uniformity here for the house? I'm sorry, can you say that again? I can hear you well. I, I, I said, we are only looking at three windows here. How many other windows are there in the house? And yeah. shouldn't there be uniformity windows. with the whole house? So, um, so for example, if if the homeowner came in with a permit for all the windows, we would, and, and let's say the front facade was conforming, we would issue a certificate of appropriateness for those front windows, but, it, but we would not review the appearance of the remaining windows. They would just be reviewed uh, for building requirements. The front three windows can be completely different than the rest of the house? Yes. Yes. Uh, because uh, for non-contributing structure, our review powers are limited to what's visible from the street. They can. So um, I often talk to property owners if, if they want to create a consistent look. It's not required, but we, we often provide recommendations if they want to carry over that appearance, but it's optional. And I will say that, um, you know, with, based on uh, what Abe was talking about is um, <clears throat> if we are agreeing to use, let's say, the casement window that's already purchased, that's the same size, if the applicant, you know, if, if the board directs that and to create the three light, and um, then the applicant would only need to purchase another window, that is provided the board is comfortable with the white vinyl for the structure. So if that's the case, then all windows would have the same material and same finish. But the only difference would be the light pattern in the two windows. And I believe Abe mentioned to me when we were doing review that the remaining windows are not easily visible on the property. This particular property is set back 30 feet and there's some vegetation. So really the additional 15 windows are not easily visible from the right of way, like in other circumstances. From the inside. Okay, and, and Abe, then can I ask one more question? Um, the applicants sent pictures of, of um, uh, houses that are similar or almost identical to their structure, probably you know same architect and everything else where the windows have been replaced. And do they look um, similar to what is being proposed um, on, the, on the structures that are nearby? Um, if I can go. Let me switch back to a different slide here. Um, sorry, my, my, point, my point is that if, um, if several of the homes, if several of the homes are 
uh, going to be compatible now with this home. And let's just five years down the road, three years down the road, two years down the road, they all are determined to be uh, historical contributing. Um, the it kind of gives a new um, uh, a new precedent for other similar structures in the neighborhood. They would be able to take a look at those homes and say, okay, well these are contributing as a little bit more of a modern style window, and they would be able to bring before the board if um, that they would be able to also do the same thing. Um, I understand what you're saying. It's just not how our code is written. Our code is written in, is based on the original. If you can maintain it, great. Least adverse is replicating that original the best way you can. Mm -hmm. um, as far as other structures, as you know, there's different styles. Some of them might have been permitted a long time ago before we had these design guidelines. But if you look at our ordinance and you look at our design guidelines, the basis is always, let's take the original. This is great. Last month we looked at a house, all the original was gone. We had a picture fortunately, so we knew what to go off of. But this one, we have the drawing, the window's actually still there. Um, so to adhere to our requirements, it, it, it's really, really easy to uh, analyze. Did they make these windows in the 1950s, early 1950s? My house is 1952. I, I because they, they appear to be replacement windows. Mm -hmm. they, have, um, they don't even fit the opening. They had to use a metal piece right. to, uh, to fill in the gap uh, because they Sir, weren't the size of the can opening. You, can you get a little bit closer maybe? I lost almost everything you said. AP asked if the windows were original. He has a metal piece in one of the spacing, and um, he 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 thinks that these might there might be replacement windows. Um, they like I said, they look original and they match his architectural drawings. Um, even if um, the original was not there, we always go back to the architectural drawings. So if it is a replacement, then it just replaced what the exact appearance of what it was designed with. I have a question. <clears throat> um, how many windows are you replacing now? Uh, five windows. Two are egress. Pardon? Two are egress. Bedroom is egress. that the casement window? Is that for an egress window? Yes. Yes. Yeah, because that's what they require. Um, is there any way you can use the windows you purchased anywhere else in the house and get yeah, the casement window? I, I could, and I told uh, Abe that I, you know, when he told me that, you know, that sounded better, but then I'm going to have different windows. And and my neighbor directly to the west of me in the same exact house has plain uh, plate glass windows. It would be yeah, a well, match for the same um, house. I, and I don't have a problem with the vinyl. Um, if you, I, you want a similar look throughout the house. Um, but if, I would say if you could use those windows in a different part of the house and you can order casement windows that would look more appropriate, I would be for that. Um, it's just, it's more about the look of the house and the, from the- Well, that's what I'm, that's really my concern. I really like, I think it's, it, it looks like that's the type of window that belongs in the house. Um, it, and, and my neighbor's houses look super. That happens. And that's what they have. Our neighbors, that's exactly what they have. Yeah, but they may not have had the same restrictions at the time they put them in. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the problem we are faced with. We, we do have a code we have to follow. And um, state and federal. Yeah. So um, I think at least it sounds like the direction from the board is uh, you, you'd be fine with the vinyl. So it would be, um, and as we discussed, for the two light window, that can be replicated with a single home. That's an option, which the owner already has. So it's really the two other windows. Uh, from what I can recall, one of the front windows is the same size as the side casement he already has. Um, so uh, I'm not sure for the other window if he already has one that side. If he doesn't, that would really be the only one. 
that would need a new referral. Yeah, but if the casement windows have to be used for egress, he'll have, if it's in a bedroom, he's going to have to put a casement window in there. In, Correct. The applicant, that egress window that you have on the side, is it the same, is it the same room as the front window? On that one room, the other one is, uh, I, I decided to go ahead and do the other bedroom. With so, okay. so for that, so that egress window, it's in the same room, so he can put it in the front. But how am I going to get? It, that's going to be the right look for the. I, I don't understand how a double no, uh, or a single hung window and a plain. Now this is a plain plate glass window. Looks no, the same. No, no, sir. Um, so if you if we go back. The windows will utilize exterior muttons or grid. So as we're depicting here, these are casement windows, but you apply a grid to the surface to create that pattern and appearance. And that can be put, the window does not need to be manufactured with that. You're able to purchase that and have it installed. And staff can provide some recommendations to you yeah. on how to make that happen. So don't feel, depending on what the board votes, if they, the board votes to require that, staff can um, provide you some guidance on that process and how that would occur. Now, since another question, since this is not a contributing building, um, we have more wiggle room, what we can allow. Um, in certain ways, yes, but um, the wiggle room is that we are only really applying these standards to the front facade. So I always tell applicants, they're the same standards. It's just a matter of, are we reviewing every side of your structure or only the front facade? Or what's visible, depending on the side of the home. Um, we just wanted to make it look like our neighbors. That's all, you know, yeah, everybody else in the neighborhood. In that. Um, and anybody can drive by here and take a look at our neighborhood, look directly across the street where they have all single hung windows. We right, but your houses you're, that were built next to ours that have them. We just wanted to conform to it because they look nice. They don't look so dated. These look dated to me. And we wanted safety. You know, that one window is, is right near our front door. Somebody could break that window and reach into our door and unlock it. We've already, we've lived in this house for seven years. We bought it and we've already had one break in. Yeah, but I don't think anybody's saying you have to keep the window you have there. We're in agreement. Well, why replace it if it's going to look ugly? Well, yeah. you know, I mean, if it's going to look the same, why replace it? We want to, you know, we want a certain look. We want the more traditional stop, look. Just stop video, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, just but stop video, this, yeah. this couldn't be a more ordinary window. I, I, I'm really baffled by this. You and, can't see me now. Oh, good, yeah. Issue. Oh, wonderful. All right. Yeah. Classic yeah. window. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry. sorry. Um, our chair had a technical issue. He's back on. Um, uh, on board. My only okay. comment is to the applicant, you. if you don't like our decision, you can always appeal it. So, you know, that's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Excuse me. I, uh, for me, the main concern is the whole process. For some reason, we have a story guidelines, and I assume you had to follow these guidelines. As it's our homeowners, before we start purchasing some windows, I, had, I don't know how the process established now. We have to be more cl uh, clear. Uh, maybe the staff spend more time for the homeowners explaining the guidelines. For some reason, I said we have the guidelines. And maybe before the homeowners start doing some alterations, maybe the staff, if they have time to sit up with the homeowners and explain the guidelines, we have to follow these guidelines to avoid any discrepancy. I know I feel the same thing as a homeowner. If I think it's going to, uh, more is like an opinion and to how the, look, the window is going to look. But uh, I don't know, the staff, they have to be more more carefully and, and, and establish a process to avoid all these, uh, these issues we have between the city and the homeowners. 
And I, Anna also, I don't know, we have the, the authority as a board to change these guidelines anytime we have a discrepancies or, 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 or avoid, we don't use the guidelines and let it be, do whatever they want to do. Or, I don't know, I don't understand. For me, the process we, is uh, we have more issues with windows and doors and everything else. And I think maybe we have to clarify or, or print more, more pamphlets or something information to let it know to the homeowners what is the, the guidelines and we can avoid all this misinformation or I don't know how to explain, but the more important, avoid all this, this contradiction we have the city and the homeowners and back and forth and it's still for a clear process if you have the guidelines, the homeowners follow the guidelines and that would be over. And still to go back and forth between, and I feel the same as a homeowner, I said, I can approve to put that windows, but I don't know. This is my opinion, I don't know. Folks, can you hear me now? Yeah. We can hear you, Bill. Okay, okay. I, I missed a part of that uh, discussion. So um, if I could, could I turn over the, uh, the gavel to Judith Just, uh, Vice Chair, for this particular uh, project. I, I'm not up to date on it. So Judith, you would ask for a motion eventually when discussion is finished. Is there any more discussion from the um, board? Well, I'd um, just I like just to. Like, oh, sorry. I was gonna ask Pam if she could speak to um, the design you can make a decision different than the design guidelines, but you do need to provide uh, basically your reasons why you are, you're essentially granting of what is functionally a variance to them and so, uh, supply evidence or thought behind why this is a unique situation. Pam, could you please just explain that a little bit? Well, let, let me just say this. You have your design guidelines for a reason. And remember, this is not just about the city of Lake Worth Beach. You also have to answer to the state. And um, many of you were on the board when we um, updated the design guidelines, we updated our ordinance to make things um, a little easier for homeowners. And one of the things that we did was to um, not force non-contributing structures to have um, windows of a, of a certain type in places where they're not seen from the street. Um, as Abe said, you really, you, ha you have to be careful in how you are um, um, watering down your um, dedication to the, to the design guidelines. And I understand, I heard the applicant state that they wanted to do what their neighbor did. I can tell you right now, if the neighbor wanted to do it all over again this year, they would not be able to do it. You still have to you have to comply with the rules as they as they change, and um, uh, we've gotten less strict. So, you know, I'm not going to say that the the board can just violate the design guidelines. If, I mean, if we do that every time, there's no sense in having them. And I assure you, the state will um, will be looking at us a little more closely when we think about having our historic preservation. Um, program. So to answer your question, yes, you can, if you think that um, it's not really going against the ordinance and the design guidelines, you could do it, but you know, you have a, a fiduciary responsibility and it's, you, sometimes you have to make really hard decisions. And I will add, if you recall, when we were going through that design guideline process, we made the design guidelines and the rules so easy that the state was no longer going to certify our program. That's the letter we got from the state. So this is the compromise program as easy as we could get with historic preservation and still have the state certify us. And I will just add that we are going to do a little update on the program at the end under uh, planning or uh, planning comments or staff comments. And we have some interesting facts, including some um, benefits about being in the historic district um, that people might not be aware of that people would lose if we don't maintain our certification. Okay, thanks. I'm still not quite clear on contributing versus non-contributing in um, what we 
require from one versus the other because we have allowed for different materials um, and different colored glass, not colored, but you know, E green or whatever. Um, and so does that apply to all properties in the historic district or just contributing? And that's what I like clarification on. So um, the easiest way to answer is, I'm not sure if you can see my screen. We have what's called the COA approval matrix. And that's when we can look at windows. And this is based on if you're contributing or non-contributing, what is your level of review? So um, the criteria doesn't really change. Um, so our criteria is to replicate um, that original window or propose an architecturally uh, compatible alternative. That really only comes into play if we have no record of what the original so based on this matrix, it tells us if it's visible from the street, staff will review it. If it's not visible from the street, there's no historic approval needed. But that, of course, is contingent on it adhering to our historic preservation um, guidelines. Since it does not, we uh, explain to the applicant what at a staff level we could approve, the different options available. Um, and if it were to differ from that, um, it would have to be presented to the board. Okay, thanks. Any more comments from the board members? I'd like to ask another quick question, please. The, um, George, uh, uh, Jordan, um, Abe, did you say that, that the, propose, the proposal removes the shutters uh, from each side of the windows as well as part of this permit? Um, that was... Um, that was not part of the request. Yeah, so no, we the don't shutter. Have any plans we, we so the, I think maybe we can ask the applicant if, with putting an impact window, if they were would no longer need that shuttering system. Oh, uh, the, the actual uh, storm shutters. There yes, are they have on the front. Storm shutters. Oh, we're going to keep them up. If if we can, I mean they're. They protect even, you know, from breakage. I mean, they, you can still have an impact window crack. So, Correct. you know, they're already there and they're very, they're very easy to use. So I, they're not Miami data approved, but they would still work and, and save us ha having to replace, um, you know, the glass, uh, those, you know, the impact glass is very expensive. The reason, the reason I ask is because they appear to be a distinguishing characteristic of that style of home as well. <clears throat> and for the record, I don't have any problem with the vinyl windows. So the question is at this point, whether to require the uh, the two larger front windows to be uh, three light instead of two light, is that correct? It changes it from a single hung to a, to yes. a case uh, type? So in its simplest form, if you're okay with the vinyl, it's really, you can use the single hung, to replicate a two light, but he would need a different window type to replicate a three light. You're right. Any other board comments? If you use the two light, then would the appearance be the same as it already is? Um, so with, with our recommendations, it would be successfully replicating um, the existing appearance of the windows. The main difference there would be the change to white, which the um, Property owners have indicated that over time they will uh, change all the windows, so we know you know if they want to use a consistent material and color throughout. So, if the property owners, can I ask them a question? Sure. Is 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 that what you're hunting for? Is for the two windows as opposed to three? Is that just the problem here? Well, um, it would. We'd like to have the house look like yeah, look, it was done properly. And if you're going to have a different look in the front windows throughout the house, it's not a very big house and it has a lot of windows in it. 15 windows is uh, substantial. But, uh, you know, to have the three windows in the front different than the others, I mean, I'm glad I, I can do that, but it's still, you know, it, it doesn't make the house look right. That's all. Um, yeah, but since we're only talking about actually two windows, you want the two windows to be the same. 
because the other window is just going to be the little window is what it is. And that, that can be, that's okay. That doesn't need the split. That's not going to look right though on the front, is it? Well, if you have the other windows as a two windows, isn't that what you're asking for? Well, but no, there's three windows on the front, but the two larger ones you're talking about with a free light, um, and, um, that's going to still give a different look in the front if we went that route, because the kitchen window is that two light, and so that's going to be the two light, and then you're going to have the, the th two other front windows with a, a split in the top pane. Right? I mean, is that what I'm understanding? Well, I, from what he just, from what was just said, I assumed you could get the two big windows that you're talking about is two windows as opposed to three windows. I mean, two panes as opposed to three panes. So, and I maybe, maybe I'll, I'll clarify. Um, yes, you're correct. The, um, the it, issue would only be two windows because we can accept a single hung replicating two light. The owner is also correct that they're not going to look absolutely the same. The best version of this would have casements in all of them with muttons and the proportions would um, all be correct. It's also right. a compromise to allow a single hung for that two light and a casement for the other. So um, I think we're all kind of saying the same thing. Okay, um, I don't really, I've never really chaired the meeting, so I, I guess at this point I ask, is there any public comment? Staff has not received any public comment on this item. Okay. Mr. Um, Chairman, can I make one more comment? Sure. Uh, I want to, basically, I believe right now with all the time and effort we put into our guidelines, and all the positive feedback we get from Jordan and Abraham. I think staff, you know, going back to what Ozzy was saying, I think staff does a great job. I think from the point of a permit application, the city has been doing great. So I, I don't think it's the process. I think it falls back to, we get so many window situations. It's because of the window in contractors and a lot of the homeowners assuming they can do because, and I'm not, because my neighbors have it. Um, we are historic districts now. We got to guide our guidelines, state and, and federal. So I, I don't feel our process is um, bad. I, I just think it's, it's, it's a good process. I just think it's um, informing the rest of our community that we are in historic districts contributing or not, there are guidelines we have. And we've done a great job so far. Staff has putting those guidelines in place. Just um, an opinion. Bob, if I can add something to what you just said, I, I think it really hit home. I just want to share with you, I'll give you a little uh, uh, window into some of the data we're going to share. Um, last year, we processed um, basically almost 300 COA applications. Okay. Most of them, like 99 for, or some huge number, it were, were all processed administratively by Abe and Jordan. 84 of them were window applications last year, and you only saw three window applications come to yeah. the board this year. Yeah. So, yeah. Three out of 84 applications came to you last year. Um, That's the rest, great. So I, I would just say, I, I think um, we're getting a lot of positive feedback on the design guidelines. And uh, we really feel like folks understand them. It's very clear what they need to do. And a lot of folks said, hey, I, I printed this out and I'm going to pick one of these doors because there's actually That's a picture wonderful. of the door. Yes. Okay. So we're getting a lot of positive feedback. Sometimes we get some folks who our owner builder and they just you know they 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 miss it or they skipped over and you're right the window contractor or the person selling them the window should have informed them that this might Correct. be possible. Okay. Um I think we're at a point where we I can ask does someone want to make a motion? Um if I may I'm sorry if you're fine with the vinyl you would want to strike condition number one at least from the condition Okay. Can I hear a motion? I don't have a package. I'm up in. Yeah. Oh, I can put put it up on the slide. 
Sure, I, I, I got a package. Um, I'm going to say I, I move to approve the HRPB project number 20-0010129 with staff, re staff recommended conditions, uh, remove number one, uh, for the certification of appropriateness COA for partial window replacement for the property located at 221 Princeton Drive based on the competent substantial evidence and the staff report and pursuant to the city of Lake Worth Beach land development regulation and historic preservation requirements. I'd like to amend that please to include number eight, uh, to, to take out number eight as well. Uh, one and eight. One and eight, yeah. Jordan, can you please, I mean, Abe, can you please um, confirm that those are the only conditions that need to be amended to approve what the Yes, um, just a moment, my screen froze. Um, so yes, number one was requiring aluminum frames. So that one is being strike. Number two and three are just ensuring that uh, whatever window they choose for those openings successfully replicates the two and three light. We're fine with that. Number four, using exterior raised muttons. Number five, replacing from the existing opening. Six, the window being right recessed. Seven, pertains to the glass. So yes, it would only be number one and eight. Okay, can I get a second on the motion? Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Great job, Judy. <laughs> It's Sorry, right. folks. Um, I know it's not exactly what you want, but um, well, we well done, Judy. All right, thank you, and thank, thank you. you to the applicants. Uh, uh, I apologize for having recused myself in that last one, but I missed most of the uh, project. Can we move on to item C, consideration of a C of A for two hundred two Fifth Avenue South? Someone from staff would like to make that presentation. Yes, it'll be George. Just one second. Abe is going to present again, so just give him a minute. Jordan, take the night off. No, Jordan. There he is. Jordan has. To, oh no, sorry, Jordan. Jordan uh, this is Jordan. I'm sorry. All right. So, uh, yeah, for the record, this is Jordan Hodges, Senior Historic Preservation Coordinator for the City of Lake Worth Beach, and I'll be presenting item C for you this evening. Uh, this is a consideration of a request for a certificate of appropriateness for the utilization of gray glass for window replacement for the property located at 202 Fifth Avenue South. Uh, the subject property is a contributing resource to the South Palm Park Local Historic District and sits... <laughs> Oh, sorry, sorry folks. Okay, sorry about that, folks. Uh, the subject property is a contributing resource to the South Palm Park Local Historic District and sits on a dual frontage corner lot at the northwest intersection of Fifth Avenue South and South Palmway. Uh, you can see it on the map highlighted in red. Uh, the property is currently used as a single family residence. The two story structure that sits on the parcel today is likely the result of substantial renovations to the property over the past century. Uh, staff believes that the building's original iterate, iteration uh, was that of a single story mission or Mediterranean revival style structure. Uh, the massing and plan of the first floor, the decorative chimney stucco application, uh, window opening sizes, and the decorative parapet on the rear attached garage um, are supportive of this concept. And a property appraiser's card, which you see on the screen from 1943, indicates that the building underwent a significant renovation in 1939. It is staff's belief that the existing second story was added at this time as the large metal corner casement windows and stucco banding around the building separating the first and second floors are indicative of late 1930s modern architecture. Per the 1943 property card, the structure had a metal shingle roof, uh, wood and steel windows and doors, uh, plaster walls and a second floor balcony fronting Fifth Avenue South, which you can see in the uh, photo. 
Uh, the structure is a unique building within the city and it was deemed significant at a local level when surveyed as part of the South Palm Park Local Historic District in 2000. Uh, so this is the property as it sits today, um, and this is as visible looking north from Fifth Avenue South. Um, and as you can see, there are some noticeable differences between the first and second floors, including the window dimensions, chimney construction, and stucco treatment. Uh, you can also see that the property owner has recently replaced the roof administratively with a new dimensional asphalt shingle product. And uh, the property also features um, a perimeter masonry site wall. Uh, here you can see the northwest and southwest views of the property, uh, and due to its prominent location, nearly every side of the building is readily visible from a public right-of-way. Uh, as mentioned, the applicant is requesting to replace all of the existing windows with new aluminum impact products with gray glass. Uh, staff worked closely with the applicant and the applicant's design professionals to arrive at a proposal that closely replicates the existing windows and types, design, and other visual qualities. Uh, so the city's uh, historic preservation design guidelines provide a comprehensive guide to successful window replacement for historic structures. Uh, and just as a brief reminder, the city's guidelines uh, were created utilizing a grant from the Florida Department of State Division of Historic Resources. Uh, and the city of Lake Worth Beach is a certified local government, uh, which must maintain good standing with the state historic preservation office to be eligible for grants, training, and access to the state's research resources. The design guidelines were drafted in a joint venture between Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council, KSK Preservation, and city staff after about a year of research from the city's historic resources, development, and specific architectural history. The design guidelines are an extension of the city's land development regulations, and they, along with the LBRs, govern what historic preservation staff and the HRPB should take into consideration when granting certificates of appropriateness uh, for projects within the historic districts. Uh, per the design guidelines, windows historically used clear glass, and therefore clear glass is the most compatible type for historic structures. Windows with low E or solar band coatings, applied tent, and mirrored finishes are not recommended. Prior to the adoption of the design guidelines, staff in the HRPB routinely permitted different window glass treatments, including low E glass, gray tints, and combinations of low E coatings with gray tints. Due to the variations of glass visible in window replacements and in new construction throughout the historic districts, the HRPB requested that glass type be covered in the design guidelines. Although clear glass is the only recommended type in the design guidelines, the HRPB, in an effort to allow for increased energy efficiency, has made the precedent on multiple occasions uh, that clear low E glass, which does have a slight greenish hue, can be approved as it has the least adverse effect on the transparency of windows. So as you can see uh, on the slide in front of you, uh, the property at 321 Columbia Drive, that is your typical uh, clear glass replacement window. And the property uh, at 301 Pennsylvania Drive, that is a uh, clear low E, which does give off a greenish hue to it. Okay, so I'll give you a little bit of project uh, background. Um, so the property, current property owner purchased the property in November of last year and shortly thereafter was granted a building permit for an exploratory interior uh, drywall removal. In December, the property was red tagged by a building division representative for exceeding the scope of the permit. On December 13th, the applicant and his design professionals met with historic preservation staff to discuss the rehabilitation of the property. It was a productive meeting and staff provided options for roof, window and door replacement, as well as other related exterior alterations. In the months that follows, or that followed, uh, Mr. Triangelo's um, architect, uh, Ms. Uh, Gutierrez, provided historic preservation staff with multiple drawings and revisions based off of staff recommendations. And on March 5th, staff reviewed the final preliminary plan. Final plan included a window and door schedule, which illustrated appropriate window and door types, appropriate divided light patterns, frame colors, and finishes that are in compliance with the design guidelines. 
evident in the slide, the glass type for all windows and doors is labeled as 5 16 inch laminated clear. Staff advised the applicant that they could move forward with an administrative certificate of appropriateness and a building permit for window and door replacement. Two months later, on June 4th, 2020, the applicant submitted a Lake Worth Beach building permit application for the rehabilitation of the property. On June 11th, staff reviewed the application and failed the permit due to missing product information, but staff did issue a COA for roof replacement. Staff contacted the applicant and requested uh, the Florida Building Code or Miami-Dade Notice of Acceptance product approvals for the windows and doors, which is a general requirement at permitting. On June 23rd, Historic Preservation staff uh, accompanied Lake Worth Beach building official Peter Ringel and Department for Community Sustainability Director William Waters to the property for a site visit. Later that day, Mr. Triangelo emailed staff the product specifications for the windows and doors. Staff noticed at this time that the windows had been ordered with gray glass. Um, as a courtesy, staff performed an additional site visit to the property on July 9th to view one of the windows as they had already been manufactured prior to the issuance of a permit. Staff uh, does not have the authority to approve windows with gray glass. Mr. Triangelo was advised that the HRPB must review the case. Uh, staff's decision was based on compliance with the Lake Worth Beach uh, Preservation Design Guidelines, as we've discussed. Um, additionally, as uh, Ms. Sita hit on earlier, um, in 2019, only three uh, window cases were brought to the board, and those were all the results of gray glass. Um, so that is just not something that staff can uh, permit administratively. Um, also, um, our standard COA conditions of approval for window replacement within the historic districts, as I'm sure you all are familiar with, states that replacement windows show utilize clear glass or glass with a clear low E coating, uh, gray, tinted, or highly reflective mirrored glass shall not be used. At this point, staff gave the applicant the option to separate the window and door replacement request from the building permit. Uh, for the scope of work of the renovation so that the applicant could move forward with the remainder of the work. Uh, the applicant's proposal for window replacement adheres to staff's recommendations and the historic preservation design guidelines in design, frame color, window operability, divided light patterns, and frame material. The request for gray glass is the only element that would require board approval. Um, as you can see in the images above, uh, clear low E glass does not tint window glass and it does not negatively impact the transparency of windows. Gray and tinted glass can decrease the transparency of windows and they become very reflective when exposed to direct sunlight. Clear glass and clear low E glass allow for three dimensional views into an interior, whereas gray glass creates a visual barrier or can create a visual barrier that can flatten the appearance of a building surface. To be clear, historic preservation staff is not mandating green glass on any projects in the historic districts. There is an option to have clear glass or opt for low E glass. The photo above was provided by the applicant. Uh, it shows one of the single hung windows purchased for the property with gray glass and a sample product with a low E coating, uh, which has the greenish hue. Uh, in conclusion, the request uh, is not in compliance with the Lake Worth Beach Historic Preservation Design Guidelines, criteria on window replacement for historic structures. Uh, staff is not recommending approval for the application as submitted um, as a result. Um, staff recommends that the board review the application and supporting exhibits to determine if a certificate of appropriateness for alterations to this contributing building may be granted. That concludes staff's presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, is the applicant online now? Is the applicant here? Uh, one moment, Mr. Chairman. Who is it? Uh, Mr. Zerdi, you're, uh, it seems like you're muted. If you could try and unmute. How's that? There you go. Thank you. 
Um, I'd also yeah. like to, to, I'm gonna rotate this a little bit because Mr. Triangelo is over here uh, next to me, uh, a little distance away. So he's also present here for future, any questions, but I'd like to um, thank you all for the time this evening uh, to discuss this project here. Um, <clears throat> one of the other things, I guess, um, I reached out to a number of the board members and we did send in some pictures, uh, Jordan, of adjacent houses um, and where the house across the street to the corner of Fifth and Palm Way uh, has some light gray tinted windows in it, uh, which we brought over to that house as well. Um, so I think some of the issues that came up here, I think all the information is accurate. Um, we've, we've been working very well with Jordan and, and, and Abraham too and staff, but um, I think some confusion occurs in the code where it states clear uh, low E is an option. Um, and that glass, when it was brought to the attention of the window uh, supplier, Mr. Triangelo was told, well, that's, you know, clear low E is green. And he did not prefer what I'm being told from him. And he can verify this too, he, that um, the window manufacturer also said, and the supplier said, well, we have a very light gray that's very close to clear. We use it all the time. He said, well, I have a blue theme colored house with the Atlantic uh, blue roof, which is in the picture and also have a uh, dark blue trim and green windows would not work with, with what's what I have. So he took the supplier's recommendation, which was actually, well, these are both very close to being clear. Neither of them are clear. And I, I appreciate that the staff also, and you all have amended and allowed a uh, low E glass in the historic district because everybody is conscious of energy. We are a very sustainable city. Uh, we've made good effort with our solar field out there in, in the old fill uh, area of in town. And I, I've been involved, a lot, some of you know me from being very active uh, in our offices at, over there at the Eco Center. So the, the light gray window actually is 20% better performance than the low E. So he was um, taken in from the options and really wasn't aware that either of them were that much different from a quote clear standpoint um, and purchased the gray, well, light, light gray tint and did it quickly because the um, window um, manufacturer said, well, we're in hurricane season coming up. So there's a long lead time. So he went ahead and did that prior to sending in the information into the city, which is a process that was really not followed the right in the right order. Had, but nevertheless, that was what he was led to believe and was has been a really um, avid historic preservationist in other parts of the country. So um, you also pointed out to the uh, house across the corner I referenced also in our justification, which I don't know if you wanted to read it or has everybody, all the board members read um, Mr. Triangelo's justification letter? Yes, I have. He, he, he goes uh, into, it was included in the board packet. Okay, yeah. he, he does go into pretty good detail of, of kind of what I'm summarizing here, but um, there are many other light gray, and I know in a previous case, just before this one, what's around the area and how it was done and when, when the code was changed, people get caught up in, in that. And I, I also agree with you that window manufacturers and suppliers, um, if they're going to be in our area, they should know, know better and, and not confuse uh, our homeowners the way this one has been. So... Um, right across the street, like we said, and, and they're still under construction. So you would think, okay, this is pretty recent and it's still an active house. It has the light gray windows. Uh, 
I think from an architect standpoint, we're looking at this picture. If you look at the top half of the low gray E, the low E gray, uh, light gray glass, as you see through to the plants uh, past the top of the wall, it's pretty darn clear, uh, pretty good compared to what's actually sitting out in the wide open. And we all know that interiors of houses are going to look darker regardless unless the lights are on at night, then it seems brighter. But in the daytime, even in the photograph earlier, um, Jordan, that you all have um, with a house that's with old, cl with clear glass, there is still some, and you can see in the far left corner where you have an interesting corner condition there, you can see through, but it still has a, a darker tone to it. Um, we might offer as a, an option for you all to consider this evening, if you feel so um, obliged to give some flexibility to Mr. Triangelo, that the low E light gray could be an option that could be added because you all um, are be, uh, have been conscious of being energy efficient with the low E option that you have for clear that maybe you could add a light gray, low E option because like I said, it's, it's much more energy efficient than the other. And um, I think that was your desire originally to even allow any kind of a low E glazing uh, in the historic district because I live actually about uh, three blocks north of here. So, I, and I personally chose low E, uh, I have a green tint because that's a color I thought was going to go good with my house. And once you have any kind of window treatments, it's pretty rare for people to not have any window treatments in their own house. So once you put a window treatment, it could be gray, it could be blue, it could be pink window curtains, whatever it is. Um, I think that maybe this particular attribute in your guidelines, um, if, if I might, you know, offer that maybe with this as as if we could get this tonight because he's really in a bind here um, and would it be very helpful but to allow this al alternate uh, to be um, more color neutral let's call it and I mentioned that to a number of the board members that I was able to talk with so I think with that unless Mr. Triangelo wants to add anything to to this no, okay. I um, I'm uh, anxious to answer any other questions that the board may may ask of us. Thank you. Thank for the you time. very much, Mr. Saerdy. Thank you very much. Uh, let's go to board members uh, with questions. Shall we start with um, Mr. Dorinzo? There we go, um, Mr. Zerdi. Just looking at what was presented to staff with clear. Uh, I mean. I don't understand the mix up. If you could clarify that again, I mean, right here on this chart. And then they went to the gray. Sure. Simplify um, it for me. Th this, when we, we've been just assisting um, Mr. Triangelo and he gave this to the window supplier. Okay. Uh, and the window supplier looked at this and that was the window supplier's interpretation that with low E, uh, clear, which is green, or low E, light gray, would be, in his opinion to the owner here, very similar and very transparent. So that was why the owner selected what he thought was still a, a fairly clear window, even that gr low E clear is green, that he didn't want green. So he chose the gray. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mr. Guthrie, questions? Questions for the applicant? Or... I've got nothing at the moment. I'd like to listen to what other board members have to say. All right, Ms. Just. Um, I guess I can understand where there's confusion and, and I would not be opposed to um, being more flexible with the low E whether it's green or gray. Uh, I think if there are different colors, that should be an option because uh, I guess it's not, not something we really discussed at the time. 
um, it wasn't really an issue. And we have approved other homes with the uh, low E gray. So um, I can understand if somebody has a color scheme going on, they may not want to have a green tint to their windows. So I, I think uh, there is some confusion there. If, it's, if we say we allow low E windows, low E coat or whatever it is, um, and, and there are colors that should be clarified. That's my only comment. Do look, the question, um, low E, does that come in more colors than gray and green? I mean, we have clear low E. Uh, clear low E, which is what we always specify is green. It's always is green. green. Okay. You, you can, uh, Mr. Dorenzo, you can get blue, you can get a deeper, uh, deeper tint. There's right. even a, a more highly reflective coating that could be applied to it as well, which would be called a reflective coating. Right. So basically, it's a, we're looking at clear low E, which manufactured tints to the green. Yes, sir. Right. And and that's and our rules and regulations state what Jordan. So our regulations are well our the design guidelines the specify design. a recommendation for clear, um, and it does not recommend any other window treatment type. Uh, but okay. we have. Um, in the course of, you know, reviewing windows, come to the conclusion that, you know, there were several uh, houses, um, new construction and window replacements in the community or in the historic districts, which were, which utilized gray glass. And there were several board member comments after those buildings went up or after, um, after the windows were installed, that they were very dark. Um, so that's when we narrowed our focus when we were looking for, you know, something that was a little bit more energy efficient than just clear glass. And if, you know, the broad array of tints and grays were, you know, too dark, then we settled on the, on the clear low E. Okay. So administratively and at board level, um, what we typically recommend is just a clear or the clear low E, which has the greenish tint. Okay, so the windows were approved and went to the manufacturer and the manufacturer switched the windows without getting a permit. Do I have it right? No. Okay, what, what is it then? Um, so so staff, staff performed many cursory reviews. Um, we worked very closely with the project architect um, and kind of gave them a, a nod to go ahead and, you know, everything looked good on our end, go ahead and submit for permitting. Um, we got that permit about two months after, um, you know, we said that everything looked good on our end. Um, and that when we got the permit is when we noticed gray glass on the order form. Um, I don't know when in that meantime, the windows were ordered. But he knew that they had to be clear when he went to R again, am I? Um, they were approved. Well, you know, they were approved as clear. Fine. Okay. And they were clear. He got switched when he went to buy it. You would have to ask the applicant. I believe that RJ was uh, from RJ Hunt from the company, window company, was even on all of Jordan's emails as well. But he, right. he asked if he could be. Comments from, uh, let's see, who did I miss? Uh, all right, Mr. Guthrie, go for it. Oh, uh, Mr. Ona. Yeah, yeah, you know, one more time we're talking about the windows and uh, the moment the homeowners or the architects who made the permits and the staff approved these permits and later on we come out with the, uh, we had to change it because we bought the windows already and no way we can uh, waste all that money. But like I said, maybe uh, we had to change the guidelines because like uh, John Cerdy mentioned about the energy efficiency for the windows, especially here in South Korea, we need this kind of windows. And maybe in the time the original building was built, they don't have the kind of facility to have this kind of windows. But in the same time, we were put in this path to change the rules and regulations of, and um, 
that's the, 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 it's kind of confusing for other, I, I know Jordan and Joe, I know Abe, they're really approachable all the time. And uh, in the middle of this project changes as a specification, I don't know how to avoid these issues for the future. And uh, give you some uh, flexibility to the homeowner that say, you know, in this case, maybe we can put something in the windows would be good for everybody. And I know that the, the house was sitting there uh, for years and I'm glad they're doing something more there. But at the same time, if you approve something now, we had to approve some changes. It's like a, we, we, we're wasting a lot of time uh, back and forth. Maybe we, I don't know, what, what, it would be, what can we do? I know, uh, I, I always, uh, I understand the situation of the staff. They're very good giving the guidelines, but in the same time, they, they, now the they homeowners and the architects, they have also the valid point to, to, to change it. And, and we are in the middle. And uh, we had to make the decision based on this two different opinions and maybe- We, we are asking questions of the applicant, uh, Mr. Omer. Do you have any questions for the applicant? No, I am okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Guthrie, did we miss you? Um, I, I believe, can we get some of the letters that have been sent in? And um, because there, there has been some public comment on these and yeah. can we get, well, that, that might that help me come, out a little That bit. will come in the public comment section. Uh, I have some questions for the applicant. Uh, uh, first off, what is the cost of these affected windows? What, what was the dollar value? Uh, approximately $70,000, including the door, including doors. Okay. Uh, well, that's the next question. The doors did come in or are coming in clear glass. Is that correct? Yes, sir. That's correct. So you want to have gray tinted glass on the corner windows and clear doors. I see four doors on the south facade. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I'm trying to establish guilt here. It appears as though the architect is um, in the clear. His drawings clearly provided for clear glass. I think the city staff is in the clear. They uh, specifically called for clear glass. Now, is this... Uh, who is who is responsible for this change? Is it uh, the applicant or is it the uh, J.R. Hunt or whatever his name is? Uh, R.J. Hunt. He represents uh, RQ Building Supplies in Delray Beach. Um, honestly, sir, uh, R.J. was privy to all of our conversations. John, myself, uh, Joel, Danny, Jordan, Abraham. Uh, yes, it was, I mean, I, I take full responsibility for where we are, but RJ is the window pro and I hire the pros because that's what they do every day. And I expect him, you know, I even, you can ask Jordan, when Jordan, as soon as he sent me an email asking me, you know, I noticed these are gray, I immediately had RJ involved. And I said, why does it say gray when you know we're supposed to be ordering clear glass? Yeah, well, and, I, have, uh, I, ha I have a copy of that email from, uh, from RJ to you, uh, where he sort of uh, throws it off as, well, gray is that much better, uh, and um, uh, not seen anything so unjust or simply unnecessary with what you were doing in this historic area. Um, and that seems to be what I'm hearing from the the comments from your neighbors, which we will hear in a few minutes. So is this a matter that you're taking responsibility for this or are you claiming that uh, the historic board is uh, irrelevant as uh, J.R. Hunt seems to say? No, I, I, no, not at all. I don't, um, I have the, uh, the utmost respect for, for the historic boards all around the country. And this is not the first board that I've, I've interacted with and I have a lot of respect. My dad was a building inspector for, for 35 years. 
um, this kind of is a is a is a is a mix up is a mix up, and I like I said, I take responsibility for my part. Um, I hired RJ, who was a pro, who actually uh, he sold the windows to the property at five zero one South Palm Way, that's adjacent to my house. I noticed the windows; they're beautiful gray gray metal frame. I thought they would complement the property, um, and that's how I tracked down, I, I said, I'd like to order the same windows. I ran it by Jordan. And we that's how the process started, maybe, well, I don't know, four months ago, five months ago. And then like John Zerdy said, uh, RJ said, hurricane season's coming. There's a, a two month lead time to order. Um, I went ahead and gave him a deposit on the windows. And here we are with this great tint issue. Uh, but I have to Are say, you, you know, I, I have to say I was under the impression that green tint was allowed from the beginning. So I'm not trying to, you know, circumvent the whole system, but I, I was, I'm, I guess I'm just pleading that uh, if, if I can have an exception to have the light gray as opposed to the green, that's kind of my um, um are, are, are you familiar with VT, with visual transmittance? I'm sorry. As visual transmittance VT is the language that window installers use for the percent VT goes between zero and, and one. A brick wall would be zero. A completely clear glass window would be one or 0.98 or so. Um, and of course, green glass has a VT that is much higher than gray glass. Uh, do you have the specs on this particular window that you've purchased? Uh, I do. Um, the specs that I've seen do not give that uh, that coefficient. The photo that I have. Excuse, excuse give me one second, please. Uh, let me see if I can. Sure. Question, do we have that um, stipulation in the code that it has to have a certain rating that way? Uh, we do not at this point. However, there is a difference between the VT of a, um, of a low E glass window. And incidentally, to change the subject for just a second, uh, there was a question and John Sardi probably is familiar with this. In the last few months, window manufacturers have been able to create low E glass with zero tint to it. So that the, the, the completely clear low E glass is out there now. Uh, so we're waiting for a... Uh, yeah, no, I'm... I'm uh, like I said, I, I emailed uh, RJ several times and I've texted him and I've called him and I, you know, I said it would be appropriate for you to be able to answer any questions from uh, the board members uh, or from city yeah, officials. I'm a little otherwise. surprised that he is not here to uh, answer. Yeah, I, I am surprised too. I am surprised too. I, I don't have that information for you, sir. I, um, I, I don't have the stats on the, on the gray at the mm -hmm. moment. Yeah. Actually, yeah, if no, let's, here let's, also, uh, Mr. Chairman, that I don't recall even RJ talking to uh, anybody, to you, Joe, about that there is a clear low E available to you. Mm -hmm. It's just been out in the last few months, John. So, uh, oh, okay. Well, you, you, you'll see your ads in architectural record or whatever. Yeah, that's something we can certainly look into. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. Is the, um, in, the, in the picture that I'm looking at, I have light green low E on one side, I have light gray low E on the other side is the is on the um, on the documentation is the light gray depicted as low E. Sorry, uh, what what documentation? Uh, the sales, I guess the the, the, wow. spec, the specs wow. on the window. As I remember, it is listed as low E. It is low E gray tint. Yeah. Uh, if we are at the end of the step of the uh, commissioner's uh, questions for the applicant, 
Shall we move on to uh, public uh, comment, of which there is quite a bit, I understand. I would love to hear public comment. Uh, did everyone receive, I don't know, five or six or seven letters from neighbors? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Jerry? Yes. <laughs> we have, I have eight. Um, everyone, each of the ones that I have are in support of um, allowing the proposed to go forward. Um, do you want to hear all of them or do you just want to hear the, the, um, I've, I've read through them. I'm happy with not hearing them read. Would like to, I would I like to just at least give the names and addresses at a very right. minimum. That would be good. Okay. And maybe just a brief I read them. paraphrase if anybody. Yeah, we'll read it, yeah. So I have, the first one will be Wendy Roston, um, mm. living at 1101 South Palm Way. Um, just um, supporting it supporting the proposed proposal by the applicant. Um, the next one would be um, Carrie G, um, who, from what I can gather in the letter, once upon a time lived in 330 South Palm Way, but um, uh, sold the home to a Mr. Kurt Moody, who may live there now. Um, so it appears that Carrie G, actually um, sold it to somebody Triangelo who then sold it to Kurt Moody. So we have those. Um, and then there's Shane Regan living at 535 South Palm Way in support of the uh, proposed proposal by the applicant. Um, then we have Jonathan Stewart of 116 Fifth Avenue South in support. And Kim Lingle, 1615 North Lakeside Drive. And Ted Johnson of 802 South Palm Way. And lastly, we have the um, Bryant Park Neighborhood Association has written a letter of support. Okay, thank you very much. I think you've all received these and um, if you have any questions or anything with any of them, they're all being entered in as part of the public record for the case. Right. Does that uh, end the public comment? Should we go into executive session and discuss it? Is the applicant finished with his presentation? Yeah, yes, sir. All right. All right, board discussion. Who wants to start? Mm, yeah. I, I guess I can start telling repeating my concern about the change in the guidelines and even the staff recommending do not approve this project. And like I said, maybe Pamela can help us to tell us what the, the, the what can we do here? And we can break the, the, the guidelines or it's okay to break the guidelines anytime we we have these kind of issues or we get in trouble if we do. Um, so any any sort of changes to the design guidelines, um, as, as I said earlier, that was funded through um, a grant um, through the uh, State Division of Historic Resources. So anytime we edit that document, um, it's a good idea to, to run it past the state. And I will say that we arrived at the um, sole recommendation for clear glass um, as a result of comments from a reviewer when a reviewer with the state when the design guidelines were being drafted. Um, so it is something that you know we can look at if, if that's something that the board wants. We can certainly look at um, allowing uh, more types of glass in the historic districts. Um, I think yeah. Bill, or excuse me, uh, the chairman hit on a good. Um, topic earlier, which is the light transmittency rate. Um, I know that um, some historic districts in South Florida do, regular, or do regulate their, um, you know, tents, low ease, anything like that. 
um, to a very, um, a very set visual transmittance rate. So it gives you a qualitative standard um, you know, for us to be able to review different window uh, colors, different window tints. Um, again, we would, we would need to run that uh, through the state um, just to kind of get some feedback on that. But um, moving forward, if that sounds like something you all would like to do, we can certainly start that process. However, at the moment, we can only go by the guidelines that we have in front of us. And this is something that, again, that we get all the time people saying, and certainly uh, this applicant is not the first to say, well, three blocks over, somebody did it, and he got away with it, or she got away with it. Um, so I should as well. Well, you know, building codes 30 years ago allowed um, 20 units an acre in places where it's only five now. I mean, the codes change from time to time, and we are required by law to conform to the codes that we have at the moment. Now, um, you know, Bill, as, as you said, it sounds like everybody did the right thing until we got to the point of purchase. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then it changed. And I believe we have to stick with what our rules say. And his plans went according to our rules. He went down there with the purchase order or whatever, according to what Jordan and, in, 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 you know, everything was agreed upon and, and, and then switched, which is, was against the rules. We have to make up our mind if we're going to stay with the rules. If we don't like the rules, then we have to change the rules. But we can't have everybody running willy-nilly yeah, and not well, the rules. Can we hear from our attorney on this issue of... Uh... Uh, I, I, I don't see that this is any different from any other project. I don't see any uh, circumstances which would require us to look at it differently from uh, our guidelines, but uh, please tell us uh, your uh, opinion. Well, I, can I ask a question? Um, how did the uh, house across the street get approved for gray? When they came in front of us. They came before us. That long yeah. ago. I, I, if you'll just give me one moment, um, staff did do um, several site visits to that property um, at different times of the day to look at the glass. And based on everything that went through permitting, um, there is nothing that said that that grass, glass was gray when it went through permitting. And it's showing up a little bit more gray here in the photos, but it's pretty clear. Um, I, I don't see gray tint on those windows. Can I say something? Yes. Okay. Um, I had been speaking to neighbor. I live in the neighborhood. I live on South Palmway. Um, go by this house every single day. Um, and and the windows are a humongous um, design feature of this house. Mm -hmm. um, as you go around it, as you if you if you go if you go to Fifth Avenue from South Palmway, take a left or a right, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be facing with the windows. Uh, it's been a really really interesting house for years and years. It's been not maintained whatsoever for decades. Um, it is great to see it, it being renovated and brought back to and what I believe Mr. Triangelo is, is trying to do is bring it back to its um, original glory in as much um, as he possibly can to the original, um, the original uh, design. The, uh, the thing that was I called and, and was speaking with, um, with with several people and one of the things that that came, I was looking in our guidelines. And so I go straight to windows. And in windows, it doesn't really address the, um, the coatings uh, windows or anything else. You have to go uh, down to page 195, I believe it is, one nine, excuse me, 198. And we have that in our packets. And it does say that the, um, the, these finishes are not recommended, but it, does, it also does not state that they are specifically prohibited. 
one of the reasons that this board has on previous occasions allowed for the low E, uh, even though it was tinted, was because of the energy efficiency of it. And the people are going for energy efficiency. We live in, in Florida at 105 degree feels like temperatures during the summer. And so low E um, transmission of, of energy is, is really gonna be important for a good many of our applicants that come in front of us. That was why my question was, is this a, a gray tint low E as opposed to the green tint low E? Could it be a little bit lighter gray tint and match the low E of the, of the green tint probably? But the, um, but the idea is, is that once this house is completed with these windows in, the windows are still gonna be a huge design feature of the house. They are still going to be um, front and center and to have this small amount of tint on them because there are so many windows in the house uh, to keep, uh, to, to, to knock down the light a little bit. This is this is one of the areas that a resident can come in, in front of this board for a little relief, and um, from from my standpoint, it he's he's from what I gathered from staff is that every aspect of this project is taking into consideration the the light panes, the uh, the, the styles of the windows, the operation of the windows, the um, everything has been you know right down to the nuts and bolts and then this one little thing gets gets in there and we're talking about a light gray as opposed to a light green um i would say you know not that i want to set a precedent but i would like number one i'd like i wish that that this is addressed in the area of windows and i agree with uh with chairman that we or and and jordan that possibly we need to go back and take a look at a vt but other than that, there's not much more we can do other than plaster big signs on every city vehicle and truck. Do not order windows until you check with, uh, you know, check with building uh, or something along those lines. But to keep things going, keep uh, construction going, to keep this house on track, um, I, you know, it would be my recommendation that we go ahead and approve it with reservation, but yeah, approve it. Just what are your thoughts? you're asking me yes I, I i agree with skip i think um first of all there is confusion about the color it says low clear low e it doesn't say that it is a green tint um i mean as an ordinary consumer would you know that you might know it as an architect or uh, a builder and if it's a, a low e building or i'm sorry window and it, they have options of different colored coatings, why would you question, can you get a green as opposed to a gray um, as a consumer? And I think there's, it's, there's a certain amount of confusion there. It needs to be clarified. If, you, if we think it, we should have more specifications regarding the amount of light that's emitted, that's another thing, but I think it's clearly confusing. And, um, I, you know, I think you have to give the homeowner a little leeway here because he's spent the money on it and he, there was confusion over the fact of what type of a window he was actually allowed to purchase, what, what shading could be. In the I, I think that was a confusion. It was stated right there, clear. Yeah, yeah but clear is not clear. It's green tinted. No, that was the re, so from our initial meeting, um, it was not clear low E, it was not gray low E, it was clear, just clear window glass. Um, and we didn't really ever bring up the topic again because it was just always presented as we're going to do clear. Okay, but clear low E is allowed. Correct. But that was never, I don't know if we ever touched on that topic after the first couple of meetings when, yeah, once staff they, started getting the drawings because okay, it was- Do they have to discuss clear. it with you for it to be approved or is it automatically approved if they go with clear low E? I mean- 
Re repeat that one more time, Judith, I'm sorry. Do they have to discuss the fact that they wanna go with a clear low E before it can be approved or can um, they Well, that's something that we would it? have looked at on the architectural drawings. Um, if it would have said low E, we would have further specified that it is the, you know, that is the clear low E. Clear low E is the standard for, or green is the standard for clear low E. Um, if the permit would have, or if the drawings would have said low E, we would have had that conversation again, but it's always just been clear. I have a question for the attorney. Uh, it appears that <clears throat> the city staff was off the hook in that they approved clear, the architect is off the hook. And now we have an applicant who is coming, instead of asking for permission, he's asking for our indulgence in something that is clearly counter to the guidelines. So for our attorney, um, are we on firm legal ground if we were to deny this request? Well, of, of, of course you're on firm legal ground. Um, they understood the rules. I mean, the elephant in the room is that RJ, whoever that is, is sounds like the person who's most negligent. And um, I don't really, I, I'm not his attorney, but I'm surprised that nobody has um, um, tried to go after him or sue him or, or have him send a letter to his insurance company because this is a lot of money. Having said that, you know, we don't know what their situation is. Um, you are on clear ground. However, um, Judith is correct. I mean, the what I'm reading from what I'm reading here in the design guidelines, um, it doesn't state that it says windows historically utilized clear glass. And therefore, clear glass is the most compatible type for structures. If, am I reading the right section, Jordan? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. Windows with low E or solar band coatings, applied tint, and mirrored finished are not recommended. Um, you know, these design, design guidelines are um, here to help um, property owners, uh, not to confuse them. Um, maybe we need to have stronger language, if not in the design guidelines, maybe we need to have it in the ordinance. Um, I think that based upon the totality of the circumstances, it's very clear that, um, no pun intended, that they were supposed to use clear glass. And um, uh, Mr. Felkamp is correct. They're now coming to us asking, asking the board to forgive, to indulge, to um, go against what we would normally do in other circumstances. So I can't tell you what to do. I think that your motion needs to be very specific no matter what it is. Um, and no matter what, uh, as uh, Mr. Ona stated, we probably need to tighten up our regulations even more so that yeah. there is no wiggle room even in a person's mind. We, we just, I, I think we just have to be very um, straightforward, otherwise, you, you know, the average person is, is and I'm not saying, we, we, we know that the applicant is not the average person. Um, they went on record and said that this historic redoing, um, revitalizing historic properties is one of his passions. That's what he does. So we're not, the, the board is not going to believe that um, uh, they should not have known better. Um, they did know better, but RJ, who's not here to defend himself. So if you're not here to defend yourself, you're the one who gets blamed. Um, apparently just didn't do his job and is not very, um, uh, uh, he, he doesn't appear to care. I mean, that email that he wrote stated, yeah, I got the low, I got the gray, but you know, it's a better look. So he was not very apologetic about, about what he did. So I guess what I'm saying is the city does not have to forgive, but there is enough room, I think, here if you want it to. Okay. Do we set a precedent? It's a, it's, there's a possibility. I mean, when the next person comes with a, a, another sad story, I mean, how do you differentiate um, this one where the parties knew what was going on from somebody who really may not know what's going on? You are setting a precedent. You are. Yeah. 
until we change the rules, you know, try to do that and maybe we could try it. The problem with changing the rules, and I think Jordan said this, is that we have to get the state to sign off on it. So I don't think the state will sign off on us um, allowing um, more tinted windows, um, but they probably will sign off on us being clearer in our paperwork that tenant windows are not allowed. We, I think we need to be stronger in stating that. Now, of course, we're gonna get people who are gonna come and say that there's too strict again. That's what happened before. So there's really no way to win. Well, okay. We have heard from the city of Delray Beach and they do have precedence uh, uh, with uh, their visual transference or I can, I'm sorry, Bill, I know I'm muddling the architectural word, but the, basically the, the amount of light that's able to go through. And the state on there has accepted, I believe um, Delray uh, staff told us 20, I think it was 20% of that VT rating. So we, I don't know if these windows seem a little dark, but I do know that maybe these windows could not be put in other places. I'm not sure what, if we knew the VT rating, then we could say, okay, well, this is Delray standard. We know that that's a accepted standard in another certified district. This might, you know what I mean? Like there's just so much to know. And I think Pam really hit on, I think we can get to a low E regardless of the color with a technical standard. I think we can get there, but we're not there now. And um, the only thing that we have allowed uh, for, per your precedent has been what we know to be the previous standard, which is the lightest low E. So I, I probably just confused the issue more, <laughs> sorry. Okay, are there other comments from board members? So um, can we set a precedent until we actually amend the code? How long would that take to amend it, Jordan? I, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm having difficulty hearing you. Can we set precedent until we amend the code? Can we uh, make a decision? That is up to you, um, Ms. Just, if you want to set, if you all as a board want to set precedent until the code can be amended, that would be at your discretion. We can't okay. advise you on that, but um, we okay. could, we could, we would work towards amending the code as quickly as possible. Would amending the code be, uh, get us in trouble with the state? It would depend on what the standards we set and the threshold we would have, we would consult with the state. And staff make a recommendation to us at our next meeting as far as um, what we were just discussing and maybe make a proposal to us so we could send it to the state? I think that we can definitely do research. We can reach out to other uh, local municipalities that have preservation programs. Um, we can definitely start compiling research, whether we'll have a definitive recommendation in a month, I'm not sure. Um, okay. But we can we'll definitely do start that process. I, I just think if we make it a little more clearer, sure. where there are no gray areas, <laughs> and um, we can proceed with that and, and avoid some of this, sure. that'd be great. Yeah, like Ozzy said, if we, if we say it right, then we won't have this coming in front of us all the time. Then there's no arguments. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's clear. I, I am... I, 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 I have a bad taste in my mouth about this. I, I very much dislike people coming in asking for indulgence rather than asking for permission. Uh, clearly the, the bad guy in this is RJ who isn't here. And if I were the applicant, I would have some, some legal discussions with RJ. Uh, that said, um, I think it is incumbent on us to change and tighten our regulations such that the state can uh, approve a, a tighter regulation on these uh, windows. I think it's particularly sad, I'm looking at a, a photo of the front of the building, that these corner windows are going to be dark gray and all of the, the doors are going to be clear glass. So it's, it's going to be a very muddled facade. Can I get a, uh, a motion from someone? 
I'll give it a shot here. Um, I move to approve HRPB project number 20-00100164 for a certificate of appropriateness for the window replacement utilizing gray glass for the property located at 202 Fifth Avenue South. Based on, uh, that's the, that's the hard right. part. Right. Wow. And Judith, please try to put some details in it because as much as it is precedent, I think this order needs to be very specific. We're going to make it a little different from the rest if you all are approving this because we don't want the next person to just say you gave it to him. Right. Give it to us. We need to at least have some reasons why. We're well, doing um, based on the fact that clear low E coding is not recommended, but it can be allowed. Mm. I don't have help. <laughs> um, <laughs> pending our okay. re, um, that our guidelines are a bit unclear as to the, yeah, the guidelines are unclear and our intent is to clarify the guidelines regarding the what is it the transmission of light that's allowed or not allowed through the windows what do you call that you have a term for that light transmittency rating yeah, yeah. it's clarified um okay. can we add to that that uh, no other um uh, projects will be permitted until the uh, Let's make that a Can we make that a separate motion after this? All right, um, fine. Um, and that kind of puts the onus on staff to right. make sure that nothing gets past them without it being clearly stamped that we kind of have the zoning in progress until um, we can get the regulations changed. So let's do that separately. And, yeah, so and we're not the motion, the motion uh, as, as presented is as written with the addition of the uh, fact that the guidelines are somewhat unclear as to the uh, depth of tint, which is uh, permissible. Does that yeah. answer Pamela's issue? I think it does, yes. Can you that motion to me? Based upon, I'm sorry. Yeah, based upon the competence Potential evidence in the staff report to the city of Lake Worth East land development regulations and historic preservation requirements. Judith, could so, you also um, make the statement that is uh, based on the applicant's testimony, not the staff report? Okay. The staff report and the. No, based on the applicant's testimony, not the staff report. The staff report required clear glass. Okay. okay. So strike staff report and say applicant's testimony. Can we get a second on that? I don't know what she did. Can we, can we get a reread of the actual motion, please? I'm sorry, Ms. Cole, can you reread the motion? Uh, let me give it a shot. Um, the motion is to approve based on the fact that um, the guidelines are somewhat unclear as to whether the low, as to, I guess, the spe specifics of what low clear E can be, uh, clarifying the light transmittency rating, and it's based upon the applicant's testimony, not the staff report. Okay. Um, I think that's pretty much it. And then the uh, happy with that. you was supposed to be that it was not setting precedent or that Thank was... you. Yeah. I think you wanted that as a separate motion. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Can I get a second, please? I'll second. Seconded by Mr. Guthrie. Any more discussion or shall we go right to a uh, vote? Vote. All right. All those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Nay. Can we get motion. a count? 
Motion carries five one. No, no, no. There were several. Oh, names. Can you, yeah, Ms. Cole, can you do a, a voice count? Or sure. A, a, yeah, I can do it. Anybody. Um, just go like this. Ozzy Ona. Aye. Um, Chip Guthrie. Aye. Judith Just. Aye. Uh, Judith Fox. Nay. I'm sorry, nay? Nay. Okay. Uh, William Feldkamp. Nay. And who am I missing? Bob. All the way up there in Maine. <laughs> yay. And we have a yay. Okay, so motion carries four to two. Yes. All right. Motion carries four to two. I Thank you, everyone. I'm sorry. Were there three days? One. I had um Judith Fox. Yeah, and then, don't we need a second one about the president? Yes. We have oh, camp for the nays. Just I didn't me. hear Bob's vote. I'm sorry, Bob, were you a yay? I was a yay. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I just can't get my screen back to see everybody. The motion carries four to two. And we have another motion. Uh, well, I suppose at this point we can uh, excuse the applicants. We're done with this project, uh, but we need to go on to uh, um, uh, I guess department reports and, and or where where do we uh, make our own motion? No, I I think you should make it now, right after this, right now. Okay. Yes. Someone like to make the next motion? Let me try. All right. Um, I'd like to move that that staff not consider, how about a moratorium on further approvals of anything other than clear glass until we get clarification on the visual light transmission um, available for for light tinting on low E glass. And Mr. Gatsby, would this include a, a moratorium on board cases as well? Board cases. A moratorium on considering on on the board considering any any further um, glass treatments other than clear until we are able to um, to and to to, to we are able to describe in detail what is allowed that can be quantified by a manufacturer through the um, a nationally recognized matrix, I guess. Uh, that's the yeah. is that the light is that the light trans uh, visual light transmittance visual yeah. transmittance visual transmittance, and I, I think if we can if we can adopt that as a uh, as a board, then it's going to be very easy. And in the future, if somebody comes to us and their light transmittance is twenty five, and we allow twenty. Yeah. Uh, right. it's, it's, we're, we're trying to get the verbiage for a motion okay. here. The motion is to create a moratorium on future board projects which involve uh, possibly tinted glass until such time as we can uh, revise the guidelines. Bingo. Uh, Chairman, this is William, um, director for the department. May I suggest that as part of the motion that uh, the and the moratorium will exist until such time as the HRPB can establish a performance standard for light transmittance that can be incorporated in the approval matrix. That is the quickest way to get something approved. Um, if you're going to change ordinances, it's going to take a much longer time. I think if we can put a performance standard within the approval matrix, um, that can be very clear. It's on the website. It can be given out to people. And we can probably get that done in no more than like eight weeks. Wonderful. That's what he's motion. 
The motion maker says yay to what he said. <laughs> I second what he said. Okay, seconded by, by Dorenzo. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. All right, are we now Bye. in to uh, public comment? If there's any public comment, uh, and if not, let's go into departmental reports. Oh, she's got it. William, you're on mute. Am I mute? No, William is. I'm sorry. Um, I'm having trouble with Zoom. Anyway, I was saying that um, we passed or we have completed the um, FY21 budget for the department. It'll be submitted to the city commission in the next few weeks along with the rest of the city's budget and it's a level of service budget. So we are gonna maintain the level of service that we have now. Uh, we do anticipate in the next couple of weeks, a submission from the Gulfstream Hotel um, people, uh, Restoration St. Louis. There is talk of a public meeting of some sort. Uh, once that is finalized, we will send out a blurb to the HRPB so they can be apprised of that. It is my understanding also that we received three submissions for the redevelopment of the L&M site. Um, those are being evaluated by the CRA and I will probably be giving you a further update on that at our next meeting. Um, I haven't seen the whole breadth of the, the um, submissions, uh, but I believe all of them are, have questions that need to be resolved before they can move forward either to the CRA board or in, uh, application for entitlement before the HRPB. Uh, so stay tuned on that. Um, we are still working toward, and this is more for our public announcement, we are still working toward an online payment program for the department where we can take online payments for building permits first, uh, business licenses second, planning and zoning preservation applications third, and co-compliance later. Uh, it's not as quick as I would have liked or the city manager or the administration we began this uh, probably the latter part of February. It is not likely to be in place until January 1, um, but we are trying to get there. Otherwise, um, stay tuned. And um, when we get that in place, you'll be able to interact with the department and the city totally virtually and online and make your payments as such. Uh, business license renewals are going out this week and next. And uh, we are going to be resuming shortly co-compliance activities with the special magistrate 90 days from uh, probably the meeting in November or December. So compassionate co-compliance is going to be moderated to some degree. Uh, we've got a lot of complaints from across the city about the conditions of certain properties. So uh, we're going to relax the compassionate co-compliance, which was an endeavor to respond to the COVID crisis. Um, and our focus will be on uh, properties that pose a life uh, safety issue and those that are uh, multifamily or absentee landlord. So if you have questions about that, you can pop me an email or give me a phone call over the next few days. That's it. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Waters. Are there other uh, department we reports? We do, Mr. Chair. We have um, quite a few departmental reports for you this evening. Um, uh, uh, Abe or Jordan are going to discuss our, uh, the first point of discussion is going to be our historic preservation awards program. So um, as we had previously discussed, it was, we extended the call for nominations through the end of August, and we were planning on doing the ceremony in October. With COVID ongoing and all of that, we're looking at different formats to potentially um, have the awards. Um, so part of this report is also um, the board members want to provide any input at the moment. We're imagining that in September, we could bring forward the candidates uh, for you to vote and potentially in October, if you're open to it, um, the awards could happen in conjunction with the actual HRPB meeting. That's just one of the options that we're looking at. Um, we can speak to you all individually 
you have other ideas of how we might want to format it digitally. Um, that's kind of the direction we're going uh, for the awards at the moment. Thank you. Jordan? Um, one second. Okay. Um, so for our grant updates, um, we are back to, um, sorry, technical issue. Um, for the survey, um, we are in the home stretch. Uh, this is our fourth year of surveying. Um, and we've got about a little bit over uh, $50,000 uh, per year. So the state has granted us over $200,000. Uh, to resurvey our historic districts. Um, so it is very important for us to keep that relationship strong. Um, each year we've tried to tackle a little over 600 resources. Uh, this year uh, we are finishing up with Old Lucerne um, and Southeast Lucerne. Those are our last two districts to finish. Um, we should have that uh, designation report uh, pretty shortly, but I'd imagine that we're going to have a significant number of properties switch over from non-contributing to contributing, uh, specifically in Old Lucerne, where we have a lot of mid-century resources that were that are presently non-contributing. Um, as for the uh, digitization grant, um, that was another uh, fifty thousand dollar grant for the state, and I'll just kind of remind you a little bit of that. Um, the city has a tremendous collection of um, hard copy property files. Um, late, late work was really a pack rat for you know, a number of years, and that's really paid off for it. And it makes our jobs really easy because most municipalities do not have um, the architectural drawing collection that we do. Um, so this project, what we've done, um, Aaron, if you will go ahead and move forward onto the map. Um, once we started uh, digitizing um, our files, Erin, can you uh, click on the link? Um, I already did. Can you all see it? No. The map? You. Huh? You're mute, Erin. All right. Can you all see? Can you all see it? No. <laughs> okay. Hold on a second. There's Let everybody. Oh wait. Um, so what we've done is we've, when we've, uh, once we've got the digitized files back, uh, we've sent them over to our GIS division um, to start uploading those property files to our GIS map. Um, so you can click on uh, your parcel um, and have full access, uh, high quality digital scans of everything in your hard copy property file. Uh, what we've also done with the map is we've um, implemented search queries in it uh, where you can switch for architectural style, for year built, for architect, um, so that if you were researching Edgar Wartman properties, you could just do Edgar Wartman and every property in the historic districts that was uh, attributed to him will populate. Um, you can also do Edgar Wartman 1920s to further specify, and then you could do Edgar Wartman 1920s Mediterranean Revival, and it would further specify it, and those will populate all over the maps, and you'll have access to any drawings or records in that property, uh, property file. So it's really exciting. It's going to be a really uh, interesting tool. Um, perfect. Okay. Um, yeah, so Agnes Ballard, uh, mid-century modern, enable the filter, and you can see in College Park, uh, she has done two properties. Uh, you can see there the year built, the style, the architect, and you can click right there on view historic documents. And you have um, all of her drawings uh, for the property and then any subsequent uh, property, you know, file documents, permitting records, uh, zoning letters, anything like that that would be in your property file, you're going to have access to now. 
Um, so that's a that's a very exciting um, you know resource for us. It'll be a very exciting resource for you know homeowners where they don't have to physically come in or you know have the file shipped off to be scanned at their cost now. Um, but both of our grants um, are supposed to be closing on uh, September 11th. Um, so we're kind of in the, uh, the last little stretch of getting all of that grant reporting finished. Um, but yeah, that, that about wraps us up on that. Wonderful. All right. Other departmental reports? Good evening, everyone. Um, I, I just am really, I asked to do this slide because I'm uh, just so proud to be working with this team. Um, I remember when I was on the board with you all uh, quite some time ago, and we were really struggling without those design guidelines. And yes. um, it was incredibly frustrating. And um, we were doing the best we could to be as consistent as possible. And now here we are with an incredible set of uh, design guidelines that are really probably the envy of a lot of historic district or historic certified historic preservation programs. And I just wanted to highlight the amazing work and the volume of work that our team does. Um, Abe and Jordan, they reviewed, last year they reviewed 296 cases, 40 of those cases went before you. Um, you see the thoroughness and the detail that goes into your staff reports, the research that goes into that. There were 40 of those cases. Three of those obviously were the window replacements that we discussed, <clears throat> and it, um, obviously the 256 administrative approvals they did. In addition, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Abe and Jordan act as the zoning staff for the historic districts, which means they function as the traditional planner's role. So they review setbacks, fences, pools, generators. So they review that whole host of additional building permits beyond their role as historic preservation folks. And in addition, um, they also take tremendous amount of time with our residents. And that's the biggest feedback that I've gotten since I've joined the team, which is um, they spend a lot of time with our applicants, um, <clears throat> especially our single family homeowners, walking them through the design guidelines. They're always available um, and uh, just send them an email and, you, and it'll give you a ring back or set up a time. Um, I don't know if you know this, but for homeowners, they, um, not so much anymore with COVID, they'll, they'll go out and socially distance if they have to, but before they would frequently uh, pop by homeowners houses who requested site visits. And now we only do that obviously if we have to, but, um, but they're just very available. And I, I just wanted to really bring this data to you all so you can see the job that staff is doing for the city. So um, the other thing- <laughs> Bravo. Yeah. So the other thing I wanted to bring up is uh, FEMA has issued some uh, new flood maps for Palm Beach County. We had new flood maps in 2017, and then they were, they're now further revised. These are effective. Um, these are functionally effective. Um, we are required um, to re review um, all new construction against this. And this includes additions. And um, if you look here, you can see um, this is the tool prepared by Palm Beach County that shows the flood zones. And we're, yes. We're not seeing your slide. We're still seeing the historic map. I think you have to switch. Uh, oh, I'm one. so sorry. This just did this to me before. Thank you. Hold on one second. It's not liking me to switch. So this was our 2019 reporting. And I just wanna show you our flood map. So this particular tool is available online and it shows the current flood zone and then what is the currently effective flood zone which they have listed as the pending flood zone. You can see that there's a three foot increase in the base elevation for this particular mm -hmm. property. And what that means is um, you saw uh, probably one of many to come of base flood elevation variance request. So basically our base of flood elevations are changing. They're requiring new construction to be raised higher. If somebody has a contributing historic structure, it is one of the only ways that you could add onto your home without raising the new addition to the new flood base elevation. 
So this is a very big benefit to our residents. And you all uh, approved a base flood elevation variant for a 100 square foot addition in Parrot Cove, I believe it was in June, so that a, and a gentleman could add a restroom facility for his house or a, ba a, a bathroom upstairs and downstairs bathroom. That homeowner would not be able to do that with the bathroom at the same elevation of his entire existing structure without the possibility of the historic waiver to the base flood elevation. That's so for just, contributing structures only? Only or contributing no? structures. And we just did no. that, if I'm not mistaken, we also approved one on right next to South Palm Park. Yep. Same and thing. that's why those yes. surveys are gonna be vitally important. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're actually expecting some folks, maybe even in the South Palm Park area where there's going to be a big impact in some of our areas where there might be a big impact who are eligible for resurvey. Some of those folks may choose to be a contributing structure should they want to add an addition, because the only way they'll be able to add an addition at their existing grade is if they're a contributing structure. So, <clears throat> um, I wanted to put some resources out there. You can see we have um, our website. You can get there through the Lake Worth Beach. You can also see interact with this flood zone map uh, just by searching PBC flood zone map. But here's the specific address um, for those who are watching at home if they want to uh, write that down and check to see if you're in a flood zone. It's always good advice to go and know if you're in, know your zone, know if you're in a flood zone. And if you are, you should really uh, get some flood insurance. We always want to encourage folks to get flood insurance. Um, <clears throat> what we're, um, we're not excited about this news, but what we are excited about is uh, the fact that we are going to put together a GIS story map. And a story map is an, is an interactive way that residents can learn about flood zones, flood protection options, flood insurance, and can learn about uh, the option to apply for a variant should they would like to if they're a contributing structure. So those are, I don't know if you've seen the story, GIS story maps, they're very user friendly and they allow people to explore data. And uh, so we're gonna put forward and we're going forward uh, to create one of these. We're hoping to have it created in the next couple months and up on the website to explain uh, kind of the complicated nature of the change and then also the benefits that our historic districts have. All right. So thank you all. That concludes our Great. departmental updates. Good work. Wonderful. Good mm -hmm. news. Excellent. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, thank our, you, last Jordan, item, our last item is board member comments. Any of the board members have some particular comments? No, let me. Okay. All right. I'd just no like problem. to compliment staff on the job they're doing. Yeah. I'd second that. They're doing a great job. I the will say is yes, wonderful. Member comments. You all had fabulous conversation tonight. It was, it was, you thoroughly discussed every item and it was, you could see how you arrived at your decisions. And I think that's very important. Thank you. Question to ask for um, uh, William Waters. He's talking about uh, the Gulf Stream going ahead and, and it's going to be coming up soon. Do we know whether or not they've Financed, yeah. The same well, until they have interest interested parties in the financing until we actually have a entitlement in place, which is the approval to move forward with a building permit application and a certificate of appropriateness. They probably will not be able to uh, finalize their financing. And so I know the project is being shopped around, but until it actually is a real project with an entitlement it is unlikely that a, a financing will make a firm commitment on financing that project. Okay, that makes sense, yeah. All right, if there are no other board comments, I think we are ready to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, anyone? I move to we adjourn. <laughs> All righty, we're out of here. Thank you, everyone. Good meeting. Bye, guys. Thank, Thank you all for your time. Take care, everybody. Please take care. Bye, Bob.